I'm gonna make better music this time. Better music. <laughs> that's it, that's it, huh? Yeah. It was worse. I can't even. Bum bum bum. <laughs> I don't know. I like. I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome to our uh, <laughs> Game of Thrones. Uh, breakdown for episode number five for season East seven, Watch. Eastwatch. Not as exciting as I thought it was going to be based on the title. It's still an, a good episode. You basically thought the next episode was going to be this episode? Yeah. I thought, like, this was going to be, like, there's zombies everywhere and they're killing us. Yeah, this was a setup episode it for was, sure, but yeah. it, it was excellent. There were so many, like, times where I was sitting there like... I was yep. so excited. Okay. I was like, this is about to happen, this is about to happen. And then yeah. it happened, and I was like... We got a couple... Yay, fan service. We got, yeah, we got a couple good returns. We got a couple uh, fun... This is the season of Member Berries. Yes. Member? You remember? Member Jorah? Member Gendry? Member Gendry? Uh, I'm Jordan. Oh, Hi. Yeah. I'm Danielle. <laughs> yeah, remember we should like introduce ourselves and stuff. Okay. And we're talking about Eastwatch today, the fifth episode of season seven of Game of Thrones. Um, <laughs> Shut up. Bum, 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 bum. Um, we start off. The, my least favorite part of the episode yeah. is the very beginning. Ha, Jamie's wearing full plate mail, and he has one. He has only one hand, and two. His other hand that's in place is it's, gold, which is just gonna solid help him metal. Sleep. Solid metal, and he's wearing full plate mail. And somehow Bron not only saved him, but also got him like a mile away. Yeah, he held his breath for a week. Yeah. Um, didn't you know that he's a merman? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, Everyone's a merman now. <laughs> I um, mean, I feel like we have the most evidence that Bronn yes. is a merman now. I mean, it was it was one of the most irritating things, I think, about... And not just about the episode, but just kind of... If, if you're going to really criticize this season of Game of Thrones, it's just that they, logic is kind of out the window at this right. point. Right. They're racing to the finish yes. line at this point. Okay, but I do have a question. This is awesome. I do have a question for this scene mm -hmm. for you. Does does Jamie have a death wish at this point? Does he just want to die? Uh, and that was He did until later in this episode. Sure. Yes. Do you think he, he had a death wish? Yes, I think because I think Olena's words I think the reason he left Olena in such a huff was more about her words on Circe and less about Oh really? Yeah, less about her words on um on everything else. I, I think he really thought, yeah, this she's got me. Like, Cersei has me and I'm gonna be pissed when this all finishes out, basically. Mm. Um, Alright, so we go to... But he and, yeah, with that scene though, he and Bran, you know, or Bran, Bran, not Bran, mm -hmm. uh, discuss, you know, Oh, oh she's got maybe two... that's another theory. Maybe Bronn is actually Bran in another theory. That's not true. <laughs> um, but, I can, like, giggle him today. Yeah, apparently. But, you know, they have this discussion, you know. She has two more. Right. In, he's you he's know, definitely... One, his biggest issue is the Dothraki. He's like, no army can... And I know he brings that up later, but he's completely taken aback by them. And then... On top of on that. On top of that, yeah. the dragon. And on top yes. of that, he knows that there's two more. Yes. So, like, he's just kind of like, well, what can you do about that? Yes. there, And that's when he talks to Cersei later, that's basically what he tells her. He's like, there's no way we can win. Yeah. And that's kind of where Cersei goes from there. pretty accurate, I would oh, say. Oh, yeah. I mean, they could probably win with just the three dragons alone. Right. Much less this massive army of terrifying horse lords. Um, yeah, then we get... Tyrion looking over the battlefield, just and kind of like you can see his crisis of conscience of like, am what? I on the right, like, am I on the right side if it's causing all this death and destruction and... Especially considering that he probably, I mean, a few, I don't know, again, time makes no sense in this show, but probably a few years ago, led those same soldiers mm -hmm. in the Battle of Blackwater... Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely rough for him and you can see it. I mean, that's just, it's, it's amazing. Acting. Except none of them really accepted him and as their, I mean, yeah. you know, his real guys were those mountain folk guys, True. you know, he, just, yeah. he, he didn't really have respect from any 
of the people who follow them to begin with, but they're still people, and they may or may not be people he actually knew, mm -hmm. and it, but I think it, more than anything, it just represents the destruction, and he's, I think he's fearful on, over what these dragons are capable of. Yes. More than anything. And we get to see some of that, what the dragons are capable of, very quickly with the Tarleys. Um, yeah, poor, so Dan poor, um, Dickon. It's really not that funny. I know. But I still love Bronn's reaction when he hears yeah. the guy's name. It's amazing. So Dickon, get, and, Dickon and Randall. Yeah, so Danny, you get this beautiful shot of the dragon. And all the soldiers, mm -hmm. yeah. Being um, forced to kneel by the Dothraki. Right, so she gives him a choice. It's not much of a choice. Now, granted, I don't think that that means this is like her becoming Mad Queen because these are not slaves she's freeing. These are not mm -hmm. citizens. These are enemy soldiers. soldiers. Yeah, they're en and they're like, enemy soldiers, yes. Right, like. You could say, like, oh, this is way different than what she's done in the past where she's let people follow me or, like, go live your life. But this is a very different circumstance, and I think that she's exerting her strength and power, like she brings up later to John, mm -hmm. in an appropriate way where she's like, hey, you guys surrendered, so I stopped killing you. Now, really surrender, <laughs> yeah, or I'm going to have to continue to kill you. And that's legitimate, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, the way she did it, maybe, with, as far as the specifics of the Tarleys... Yeah, but I mean, as far as like saying, "Hey, bend the knee or die," like that's yeah. But tell me, that's not reminiscent of the Mad Queen or the Mad King burning the Starks to death when she torches the Tarleys in front I, of their soldiers. I disagree because one, the Tarleys made that choice. True. Two, she didn't do it for funsies like the Mad King did. Well, the Mad King didn't do it for funsies. He did because Bran broke his brain. He I mean, did it for funsies, though. Yes. With a broken brain. Yes. In your words. But, like, it's very different. He was to he tortured people because he enjoyed it, which True. is very much like what Cersei does. Burn them all. Cersei is the one who does it because she enjoys it. She loves the fact that she's torturing Ilaria and that she tortured the the shame. Not Like, she gets pleasure. She yeah. She's boned after but in, that. But in her mind, she's doing it because those people wronged her. That's why anybody is doing anything in this world. What are you talking about? But, I mean, I, she's justified in her mind. In Cersei's mind, she's justified. Well, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, logistically, if you're talking about madness, Cersei is much more on the madness scale than Daenerys. Okay. People, like, just because she has a dragon doesn't make her mad. Like, that's... Okay. She could have beheaded them or something, but she's trying what, to... Where have you said She's trying to exert fear, for sure, mm -hmm. but she's not, like, sitting there, like, afterwards, like, oh, now, Tyrion, come bang me, because I'm really horny, because I burn some people, and that's what Cersei's doing. Yeah, I bet she misses old Daria Naharis, though. Yeah. That's, no. that's for sure. Anyway. Yeah, I liked Tyrion trying to send Randall Tarly to the wall, and... And he again. Randall he Tarly. He not to again. Well, Randall Tarly said, she's not the queen, she can't send... Like, he specifically steps in and is like... Screw you, basically. Right, like, so he made his choice over and over again. Yeah, he did. That's true. Like, and then, but that what that means is that Sam is really the heir there. Yep. He's even got the sword. Yeah. So that will come up. He, mm -hmm. he, we find out later he doesn't know about it, but that I'm sure will come up at some point. Especially because Sam's not becoming a maester anymore. Which we'll get right. to that. But. Sam likes to just steal things and run away. <laughs> He's, he is a little... Asshole. I'm going to steal this baby and run away. I'm going to steal... Steal a sword. I'm going to steal these books. Yep. Um, so then we go to Jamie and Cersei. Hey! My dog is... Ghost. Ghost wants to go hunting. This is my jaw dance. Jamie comes home. Um, he basically tries to convince Cersei to, like, give up. Like, he's like, we're going to lose. And she, he tells her about Olena. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't really believe him at first, but yeah, he, she she believes him by the end of the conversation. Or at least she pretends she does. We Cersei's kind of hard to read at this point. I thought it. Made I sense. think when he's so, explaining, but, like, yeah, do you think that Olena wanted her her granddaughter to be like who could she better control? Like, of course. Cersei basically says though she'd rather fight and die than like, at this point, which is very different than how she used to be. Like she was. 
that person, she had her kids and, like, the poison sitting on the throne. She essentially wants the prophecy of Maggie the Frog fulfilled, is what it seems like. It's like, it's it's been, it's so close to happening at this point that, to well, me, speaking it's... of, she's well, pregnant. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll but get there. that, what does that mean? Okay, <clears throat> let me go to Drogon and John. Yes. Great CGI. Yes, as John gets to pet the dragon, which we've only ever seen, I think, only Daenerys and Tyrion do before. Well, all, nobody else has pet Drogon. No one's pet Drogon, that's true. But as far as just petting the dragons in general, very few people have done that. Well, and you see... And Drogon the comes... The way Drogon does it. Yeah, Drogon comes... Approaches John and lets him and as opposed, smells him. Mm-hmm. So that very much getting into and that. You can, you can see Danny like kind of confused, kind yeah. of worried, like she doesn't know what's happening. But then she kind of plays it off like it was normal. I'm like, come on, give me yeah. a little bit more than that. Yeah, but like be like, that's real. At least be like, that's really weird. One thing I did notice <laughs> in this scene is that um, Daenerys on her cloak. I think this is the first time I've ever noticed it. She has wolf fur on the um, the lining of her oh. cloak. So that could be kind of a, a, t- a, a hint that the wolf is getting getting his claw. Into the dragon? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, um, Jorah! Jorah Mormon comes back and looks really good for a guy who has leprosy. Who had all his skin peeled off. Yes, like looks really good. Well, it never affects his face and we don't see his body. So. Yeah, but like he looks very healthy for someone who literally just had all his skin cut off. Um, True. Um, but before that, we get Danny asking John about the knife in the heart again. That's, oh, I forgot about that. You're right. Yes. So it kind of cuts off like it did with their scene in the cave where she's like, you bend the knee. Mm-hmm. Like, right. where, like, we wonder if there's any more to those conversations because they don't really feel finished at the time where they kind of cut the scene. Yeah. Um, and you have to assume with all the amount of time that's passing that things are happening off screen that we don't yeah. get. So it was another hint to that, so that's obviously going to come up again. And um, I don't know. I don't know why he's so weird. I mean... I would think he's weird about it because he doesn't want her to think he, she, he's lying about things that are actually important, and so if he just seems like this crazy... Yeah, I'm not sure why he's so weird about it. Yeah. Maybe it's... I mean, maybe it's maybe it's the fear that he'll be brought back again. Like, maybe he doesn't want it known that that, that can be done. Mm. Like, I don't know. I, yeah, I'm not sure what's so weird about it to him. Or maybe it's just... I mean, she's... She's been burned alive twice, and she survived. Like, yeah. it's, it really wouldn't be that weird to her. Yes. Well, it shouldn't, at least. But the she was like, are, I don't believe Other things are, yeah. yeah. I don't believe in White Walkers, but I'm flying on a dragon. Yeah. Uh, but yes, Jorah shows up. Uh, they hug it out. They have a pretty good, like, honestly, like a surprisingly drama-free reunion. Um, I even, it even seemed to me like Daenerys kind of was looking at Jorah with the eyes that he wants her to look at mm. him with. Like, I don't think that Jorah and Danny are going to end up together. Yeah, because um, how old are they in the books? Yeah. It's a little creepy. But even still, I, I feel like she was looking at him with... Admiration that he... Pure, did, yes. He like, did that for her. Just so proud of him, so happy yeah, that he's Yeah, that's how back. I took it. And that's all he's ever really wanted from her is her to look at him like I'm she, so she hasn't really had loving feelings for anyone since her hut it's been I, yeah like she's had even Dario she obviously no. she didn't care about Dario she no. just yeah she was just into him he was like stabbing he was good at stabbing things mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway um, I do wish he had a blue beard in the show. I know, I know. He's so much cooler sounding look, cooler sounding looking. Yeah, good sentence. English teacher. <laughs> cooler sounding looking in the books. All um, right, when we go to the crows and Bran. Yes, well, they're probably ravens. Okay. Because, I mean, he was, he was the three-eyed raven. Sure. But Bran sends his raven army, he sees a giant group of zombies, um, 
and then immediately sends letters. I wrote ravens here. Not that you could read that. Yeah, that doesn't look like a word. <laughs> um, it definitely looks more like ravens than crows, though, right? No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but he, yeah, he, he sends letters immediately to um, John down at Dragonstone and the Maesters down at Old Town. We don't know anywhere else. Yeah, he might have yeah. sent he might have sent letters other or other places. Because he kind of says we need to send. But um, the Maesters are very quick to kind of poo poo it. You know, oh, burst the ball, cripple the Sure, but before we get there. I want to talk a little bit about that scene with the Night King. Mm-hmm. So, he looks up at the cro- the ravens. Oh, and he, like... And he yeah. interrupts it. Is that because, like, is that Bran noticed he looked up and knows he's there, so he, he stopped it? Or is that the Night King is able to interrupt and they're going to have, like, some psychic battle at some point? Well, it come, yeah, it comes back to the, the mark on Bran's arm. You know, Does is, it, though? Well, yeah, is there some connection between these two, or is it just... Is there a connection regardless of that? I can't... Because they're both yeah. kind of created by the children of the forest. Their powers come from the children of the forest. I mean, we see in the cave last time, we see all of these symbols of children of the forest, and they're the same symbols that the the whites have been putting bodies in. It's like, they yes. are very integrated into this same kind of magic. So I think that it's like, mm-hmm. it um, these where. Well, he's not on the tree doing this. He's warging. But, like, that magic is all stems from the same network, I think. So, mm-hmm. like, and we have the two most powerful beings as far as that magic goes. So, is there some connection there regardless? Because you think about before he touched him, he was in, he was able to see him in that that vision anyway. And True. go up and touch him. Yeah. So, like, there's some extra stuff that he's able to do and I really want to know because I don't think it's all of the whites can do that kind of stuff I think it's, there's yeah. something special about him and yeah. his abilities and who who he is is he a Stark one of the first men um, and he has dragon glass in him do the other we don't think the other whites have dragon glass in them because they did this to them <laughs> did hey baby I'm going to turn your eyes blue on this altar now that's, you're... that's my baby impression. That's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but, what do you think? Does he have um, some kind of control over like Brand's powers? Are they equally matched? Is he gonna like? I think it's just. I think it's similar to the title of the show, this the Song of Ice and Fire. I think it's they're interwoven, even if they aren't directly affecting one another. I think they're yeah, they're gonna they're gonna wind up being interwoven in some way. I just came up with a brand new theory. What if the Night King is a song of ice and fire? Because he has he has dragon glass in him, which is made of fire, and he is ice. That's not some that's not already out there, right? I've never heard it. Do you like it? Or are you just being an asshole? Kind of I mean I know you're kind being of an bold. asshole. Do you like it? It's, it sounds Reasonable. So we have the Night King and John, who are both fire and ice. So the song is when they clash their swords together. I don't know. One of the main things I've heard now is that the song. Their swords. <laughs> <laughs> they're in a sword, sword fight. <laughs> One of the main the main new theories I've heard now is that the song of ice and fire is actually going to be when John and Daenerys fight. That's new- boring because she's just fire and he's ice and fire. Yeah. So that would be. This, but the song. Okay. Yeah. Shut up. Whatever. Okay. So Sam steps in. He tells the maesters, "Hey, I saw the zombies," and they're like, "Shut up!" And he's like, "Okay, I'm." He's like, "I know that kid," mm-hmm. and they're like, "No," and he's like, "I know White Walkers," and they're like, "No." Give us more. De- okay, we'll we'll ask for more clarification. I like I like too how Sam is somehow like the smartest person in the world. He's like, "Oh yeah, I just." cured this, like, horrible disease that makes people into literal, like, monsters. He's Harry Potter. He's special. And I also happen to know that zombies are real, and Jon Snow is awesome, and they're all like, you a little youngster. Well, you think about it, the maesters go there really young, and they don't have a lot of life experience, and they just yeah, sit there and read, true. and they get to, they just sit there and make their own opinions based on the society that's there. And the society there, there's lots of theories in the books that they are actually trying to get rid of magic because they want to be the ones in control. They want to be and in control, pe- yeah. people respect them and their ideas and stuff like that. So and there's there's maybe some conspiracies happening. Possibly. So that might be why Sam leaves. 
<laughs> but yeah, so we get Bran sending his letter. Not only does it go to Old Town, it also goes to um, Varys, or it goes to John, but Varys reads it. Because yes. Of course he does. And he's, Varys is, again, kind of le- leaving, um, or leading us towards this idea that maybe he's not all in on Daenerys. Well, he so they're discussing the battle, and his his thing that he keeps saying is, with the right counsel, she's great. And I think that's fair, because like he's seen a lot of different kings, and they all are surrounded by people, and depending on who they're surrounded by does impact how good yeah. they rule is, regardless of who they are. So I think that he is... I think that he has some support behind her, but he wants to see that she's listening to people, yes. and that... You know, I think he has some PTSD from her father and from all the other kings. Like, he wants somebody who's actually going to listen to other people yes. as well as do the things. But, obviously, he has a whole different storyline in the book, so who knows? Yes, who knows what's going on there. Um, but then, yeah, we cut to the War Council, again, with Daenerys in Dragonstone. And their new plan is we need to team up with Cersei. Yeah, this is the second part of the episode that I was a little confused by. Well, they they decide if, you know, because back in season one or season two, they brought uh, the hand. hand of the first white they found, those those guys who woke up and tried to kill the Lord Commander, they brought that hand back, and by the time it came back, it was, it was gone. Um, so now their plan is, let's capture one of these things alive. And yeah. bring it to King's Landing. I understand that idea, but, like, why? Like, this is my issue. Daenerys can just come down and burn people. Like, I don't understand why they need Cersei on their side. Like, this whole idea of, like, if, oh, if if Danny goes down and helps, then Cersei's going to take over the... She already has the country. What is she going to do? If your army is down there, she's not hurting your army. Well, if Daenerys sends her dragons north to fight the White Walkers... Cersei's just going to take over Dragonstone as soon as she finds that the dragons are gone. That's the but issue. what if they're not even there? Then who cares? Then they'll just take their army up and take over King's Landing. If they take all of their shit down to take care of the Whites and they leave Dragonstone, who, what are they losing? Dragonstone isn't that great. They're going to go take King's Landing anyway. I don't, I don't know. know. I just think there's some holes in it. I think it was very much like... How can we get Tyrion and Jamie in a scene together again? Yeah, I mean... Because it, it seemed, like, a little ridi- ridiculous for him to just, like, go there and be like, we're going to have this talk. Like, yeah. I'm not going to send a, a raven. Like, I'm going to, like, go there? That's so risky. And it also... it, I will say, a little later is what bothered me. It seems absolutely absurd to me that Cersei would let Tyrion enter... King's Landing, and then let him leave. Because she does say she knew that they were meeting. Yeah, yeah so That's, that scenario was a little far-fetched for me. Yes. That scene was absurd to me because, you know, Cersei's basically made her life's goal stopping Tyrion. Right, she thinks he's the one who's going to kill her. Yes. Although now, I we think, haven't played that into that in I think that might show. be changing, though. Because I think that might be why she tells Jamie her news. Yeah. Because okay. she's worried about that. Well... Anyway, we're going north. Re- no, no. Mm. But I was most... Oh, I guess we go to Davos and Tyrion actually get... Are we talking about that now? Because I got really excited when Davos was like, I have my own plans. And I was like, Gendry! Gendry! Yeah. Go get Gendry! Yeah. And the people I was with was like, what? Yeah. And then, and then when they saw they're like, oh, you knew it. I'm like, come on. Come on. And then I was like... And he was like, I don't have a sword. And I was like, Warhammer! Yeah, War and he had this massive... that kind of looked like it was maybe had some dragon glass on it. It was like it shiny. Like obsidian. Yeah. It was very dark. Dragon. I know. Yeah. I'm saying it, it, it looked, looked very yeah. And it was pretty cool to see him um to see him bust some heads for them from those Lannister soldiers yeah. after That whole scene was definitely to show us that he can wheel after just like his dad, yeah. yeah. After Davos uh talked talked about how fermented crab is the Viagra of Westeros. Yeah. Um, but, so my other issue is, like, yeah, Davos can get in here and people won't recognize him. If anyone who sees, he has, like, they bring up, like, you have a scar on your face. Like, he's very, one, he's a dwarf in this world that we don't see a lot of them just walking around. Yes. So, like, that makes you stand out. Two, he's wearing nice clothing. 
like he's he doesn't like when a lot of times when you see like when we see the little people who are like doing the show and stuff mm-hmm. like they're they're not well off people um they are often outcast yeah. by their family they're, yeah they're entertainers or yeah they're right clowns and so like things. that would be odd to see somebody who looks well off who is a little person or in this world they're call them dwarfs and but then like you have these distinctive scars yeah. and distinctive Lannister hair. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. Wear a, a cloak. We're so, like, yeah. That part was just way too far. Ahead. It was. But a it was bit. a really fun scene. Regardless. It was. It was seeing. It was fun seeing Tyrion and Jamie kind of reunite and talk things out. Um, and yeah, we'll come back to that in a little bit here. Um, we've got this. Great scene with it back in Winterfell. Oh wait, and, you know nothing fucks you harder than time. Davos with the lines this episode. Oh yeah, Davos is the king of lines. Okay. Davos is awesome. Um, but we go back to Winterfell, um, and we see this kind of the the discord between Arya and Sansa, which later on in the episode it seems like is really being sowed. By Littlefinger. Well, you also see that the, the northern people are very fickle, and they are like, well, granted, Lyanna wasn't there to kind of yeah. be the voice of reason that she's been the whole time, yeah. but, because, um, you know, you you need a ten-year-old yes. to put you in line. My lords, I'm not going to knit by the fire. That's mine. I, yeah. That's not, that's not bad. Um, so, so we're also seeing just the stress of this situation there yes. to begin with and Sansa trying to handle it and it doing fairly well yeah people are respecting her and she understands this world which Arya doesn't understand and Arya is nuts I mean I think in this scene it really showed the kind of disconnect that's happening. Well, they happening. never liked each Arya yeah. never liked her. So they don't have, although they have the bond of family, they don't have a history yes. of respect or trust. Um, she has her idea of who Sansa has been, and she doesn't really see how she's matured from there. Mm-hmm. And, and she, sh- so sh- her her lens that she's viewing her from is, how can I see that you're the same person I've always thought you yeah. are? And I'm sure in, in both Arya's mind and Sansa's mind, the other one is just um, an amplified version of what they used to be. And they, you know, in a lot of ways, they are. Yeah. But, but in Sansa's mind, Arya is just a little boisterous tomboy who wants to stab and fight and blah, 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 mm-hmm. which is basically what Arya wants to do. And in Arya's mind, Sansa is just this prissy, she, you know, she walks out, she's my lady, as she leaves. Mm-hmm. So we have this bizarre, like, they're still on the same side, but... They're not on the same side. Arya feels like she want she wants to Sansa to kind of prove herself to her before she's going to believe her. Yes. And and that's fair considering all that Arya has gone through. Like she doesn't trust people. But in reality, and Sansa wants Arya to prove herself too. It's like okay, so you can kill people, but is that like so what? I don't think Sansa cares that much. Mm, I kind of do. I think she just wants Arya to listen to her. And not yeah. be involved. I don't think she wants her to prove herself in any way. No, yeah. but I think she wants. I think she wants before she fully brings Arya into the fold. She wants Arya to show that she's more than just a, an assassin. I think Sansa is anything. She's just saddened by who Arya and who Bran are, yes. and I think she just feels more alone. Yeah, she wants um, even John. She, yeah, she wants some true. She wants family, and she doesn't have it. Yeah, she just wants other yeah. people to listen to her and respect her, and not be insane and unfortunately she has a brother who's raised from the dead a brother who's um a tree god and a sister who's a faceless man yeah. so you know and a creepy and she's like who wants oh to have i didn't there. get superpowers from being raped so yes. bummer yes you all had bad shit happen to you but you got like superpowers and yes. i got redder hair she did get real red hair. She, yeah, she wears a wig. And now. she dresses really nice. Like, she wears, like, seriously clothes. It's, like, super. Yeah. And she, like, makes them on. I don't know how she has time to do anything. Yeah. Um, speaking of Cersei. Oh, wait. Before. Great part. We finally get ghosts mentioned. So we know Ghost is still around. Yes, Ghost is still around. Even though we don't have the budget to show him, apparently. Right. Because the dragons cost too much money. I think we could at least see, like, a white tail. Like, yeah. Going by. Yeah, just. You, just, you only get one dire wolf per season, so we got Nymeria, and that's it. 
So Cersei is meeting with Kyron, and we kind of have seen him in passing a few times, and Jamie's been, like, weirded out by now him. Now we know why, uh, yeah. Um, but do we? Is she really pregnant? I think she is, but is it really Jamie's? What if it's the mountain zombie baby? I'm not, I doubt the mountains. I, I, what if she just wanted... My guess is the mountain is firing blanks at this point. <laughs> uh-huh. Kyron had to... Get her a little test tube baby. My guess is, if if I had to guess, it would be, if she actually is pregnant, which I don't know. There, I would almost say there's, in my mind, there's one hundred percent no way it's Jamie's. Really? Who would you think it is? Euron. I guess he's as far as we we know, he's still there because it ne- wasn't necessarily mm-hmm. his ships taking it, down. The- if she actually is pregnant, I would say it's Euron's. Um, I don't think she is. I think it's. I don't think she is either. Um, I think it's being used as a as a trick because she's seeing Jamie kind of push away from her, and she doesn't like that. Yeah. Oh, she's a hundred percent abusive relationship yes. person, just like Dinklage, Littlefinger. Dinklage is Tyrion. That's right. But his Baelish, first... Peter Baelish. That's what I meant. Someday. P- Peter Dinklage. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what you did. Yeah. I just, okay. I just flipped Dear it. Dear Lord. Someday you'll learn how names work. I understand. You can see the logic. They both have Well, after you explained it to me. <laughs> yes. It was wrong. Yes. I'm... It was. Gendry meets John. I loved this scene. This is my favorite scene in the whole episode when Dad was just like, Tell him your name is blah, blah, blah. And he was like, my name's Gendry. I'm Robert Baratheon's kid. What you is, and I are bastards. What is with Davos' terrible name? He's like, tell me your name is Clovis. <laughs> like, what? At least pick a... Let him pick his own name that he no, likes. No. Clovis. I think, I think that was the name. I love um, that. I love this scene. I thought it was hilarious. Oh, wait. Look what I wrote. Oh, Gendry well, and John. Gendry and John should be that you no. know that's gonna happen. Not no. in the actual story, but you know people oh, are gonna yeah, be like. Oh yeah, I'm sure it's already out there. The way that they like looked at each other. Yeah. There's gonna be some some gifts of that. I, I we didn't mention. I'd love to when Gendry when Davos first met Gendry, he was like still Rowan, huh? And it yeah. Was like, oh yeah, that was a big fan service. So long ago, like season two or three, when Gendry was just rowing away. That was the last time we saw him. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was hilarious. I'd like. So Gendry is like the same personality as John. Very honest, yes. hardworking, but not. He, he's a lot more chipper. Yeah. Don John is very Don. Well, John did die. <laughs> I mean, he's he kind of. He, he has never been chipper. That's of true. Course, you see him not right. invited to dinner. He's out there moping. Like he's always. Well, been you would do that if I went to dinner and didn't invite you. That happens all the time. Yeah, and you're always sad about it. <laughs> no, but my point is, like, Gendry's been had a much rougher upbringing, and he is happy and excited about life. He's excited to go kill White Walkers. Yeah, he's he's, immediately enthusiastic about it. His personality—that's just his personality. He's just excited to make weapons. Yeah, he's like, I'm gonna make a sword. It's gonna be awesome. And I I want to come fight, and I believe you immediately. Mm-hmm. And Davos, oh, you're here. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Like, whereas John is like, I need to. Go brood about this on a cliff for a while. And There's White Walkers. There's an army of the dead. And Donald's is gonna make jokes about me wanting to be with Daenerys, but I can't even think about a woman. Just staring at our good heart. So yeah, they go north. That's what I wrote. We going north. That was Jorah, John, and Gendry all head up north. Yeah. They're going to Eastwatch, and they're gonna try to fight the zombies. But it's just they are very similar to their dads. One that wasn't raised by his dad, and one that was raised by not his dad. Yeah. Um, in that way, we have Ned was the very serious one, and and Rob was kind of the, the fun excited lady, to yeah. fight party kind yes. of person. So they might be reliving that. Um, Sam and Gilly. Yes. So big. One of the most important details in the episode, and this Sam, is the time where I started going like this. As soon as she said annulment, I was like, Sam, the smartest character in the show, completely misses this. This yeah. important detail. Now, granted, he has no context for this being True. important. And Gilly can't read. So, in his mind, he's just like, whatever. You know, like, yeah, he's not listening. Yes. Yeah. Um, but we find out that Rhaegar actually had his marriage annulled, his marriage to Elia Martell. Martell. And, and it said the same day 
as he was married to someone else. But they don't say who, but we all know that yes. that's Lyanna Stark. So that means... In Dorne, which is where we saw the Tower of Joy scene of yes. John being born. So this means that although Daenerys is still legitimate, because she's Rhaegar's sister, it means that John is technically... stronger... Well, not even how stronger. He is technically the rightful heir. If you're going by Daenerys's criteria, sure. John is the rightful heir as Rhaegar's legitimate son. Um, Which I think gives more um, weight to the idea that they might get married. I know a lot of people don't like that idea because they think that's really... Fa- but like politically, that makes a lot of sense. If she's yes. like, oh, he has more of a right and I want to be... Qu- like and he already has the north and i'm like mm-hmm. it just politically makes a lot of sense and so but it is interesting how that kind of turns the tables because right now it's daenerys who is claiming power and claiming she's in charge and all this stuff whereas john is the kind of reluctant like oh, i'm just doing this because my people chose me whereas if this information actually came out you know daenerys doesn't really have any claim and so it's going to make things a lot different with how... Her claim is her dragons. Well, yeah. I mean, she doesn't but really... But if she wants to say, I'm the rightful king, if John is like, well, hey, and I'm sure going to have, have my that. boy publish this and show that I'm the rightful king. Um, no. I don't think he really cares about but that. He but he can hold it over her head, though, and say, like, you better be good at your job. Mm-hmm. I mean... Well, you know, she has this whole idea of breaking the wheel, but she's never said what that means. Like, she wants to rule, just yes. like everyone has ruled. Yet, if her and John do get married, and they actually rule as a team, instead of, like, the one rule... Like, even when you mm-hmm. have a queen and king, it's the king that is ruling, and, like, like Cersei They'll is the another first... another one of these. They can sit next to each other. I'm just saying, that might be a way that that is changed, is that you yes. you don't just have one all-powerful person. You know, we see this idea of these, these council people. Maybe we'll have yes. more of a... I don't know. Like a parliament-type right. style, almost, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so Sam leaves. He decides he's not going to be a maester anymore. He doesn't like the maesters because he doesn't think they're doesn't. Listen. Well, he also doesn't think he's doing what he needs yes. to do. He knows that this mm-hmm. stuff is important, and he's seeing that they're not going to believe, so he needs to just go and do something. So he, he takes a bunch of scrolls, which to me seemed very haphazard, but I understand he's been and he probably working took, with them a bunch. He, so he probably, probably took knew. the scroll that Gilly was reading, too would be my guess, and so that's... Or at least she did. She was probably interested in reading about how many poops this guy took. Yes. But yes, he says he's sick of, uh, what is it, reading about the achievements of better men or something like that, which we've heard before from, was his dad who said that? I don't remember. It was, we've heard that line before. Um, So he leaves before finding out about his father and brother. Yes. And we assume he took all the things he needs we need to have him tell us. Yes. <laughs> no, there's a lot of scrolls there. Yes. Um, I almost thought that he was going to back out of it. when he. So he comes out and he like looks at the globey thing. Mm-hmm. And then he like goes back in. And I thought he was going to put him back. No. But he... But like, yeah, oh. that scene confused me a little bit. <laughs> Maybe it was you just seem showing... like you were just confused during yeah. this episode. Maybe because you were just doing this whole time. I was. You didn't understand. But I think it maybe it was just trying to show that the sentimental loss that he was feeling. Like this was yes. his dream his whole life. And, but to me, I thought, oh, is he then saying, oh, I need to stick this to yeah. But No, they were off. We don't know where. They don't. I mean, we assume to go to I John. S- I but... assume he's going to. Well, and that's interesting. He's going to go to Dragonstone. Is that what he said? Well, probably if he wants to go see John, he I think he knew John was at Dragonstone, mm-hmm. and so if he goes there, John already left, so he might show up, and so they might get some more of this kind of telephone aspect going on. Yeah, well, that's that's what you went with on that one. Interesting. Um, near the end of the episode. We got probably my, my other favorite scene was this scene with Littlefinger. I love when Littlefinger is actually like being Littlefinger. Yeah, this is another scene that annoyed me though. Why? I don't know. I this idea that um, Littlefinger is like getting one over on Arya seems. What is he though? Oh, I think he's totally trying to bait her. He is trying to bait her, but. We Do you seem, think she knows? Absolutely, I think she knows. Okay. Um, 
and that's that's what I think is so fascinating about watching these two kind of play off one another is these are besides Varys, these are probably the two and you know who knows where he is in this these are probably the two most clever people that we we know in this show and to watch them kind of face off because I mean you think way back when mm-hmm. when Arya was Tywin's cupbearer we had that great scene where Littlefinger comes in and probably recognized who it was yeah. and didn't say anything, didn't do anything. So I think we have this really interesting kind he of... Like, he likes to know those things more than anything yes. and use them when it's actually useful. So I think we have this really interesting cat and mouse game right now of who is ahead of who. Because mm-hmm. it seems obvious to me that part of what Littlefinger's doing is bait. Part of what he's doing is probably legitimate spying. Part of what Ari is doing is bait. Part of what Ari is doing is probably legitimate spying. Yeah. I do think he's just playing more in, you know, in the theory I, I talked about last time is I think he's trying to, to isolate Sansa. Yes. And so he's trying to make Arya, he, like, he sees an opening and he wants to yes. make Arya not trust her. He wants to make Braun not, he wants Braun and Arya to go together and, like, he wants Sansa to need him. Yes. And I, and I think this is just playing into that hand. I think, though, he's overestimating Sansa's faith and family, which I think is what's going to get Littlefinger killed, is that he thinks Sansa's going to choose him over her family. Mm. That's that's ultimately what I think. where I think this is headed. Well, I think that's what he's trying to get her to do. He's trying to make that inevitable by his... By Arya not wanting to be with Sansa, but you know, yeah, but I think he's trying to play both sides. I think he's overestimating his own influence over her. Yeah, but he's doing what he does. Um, Then we get um, John and Tormund. Yes, and the the Brotherhood shows up. Um, We get Beric and Thoros and the Hound, Mm -hmm. and we're going to Eastwatch. Is that all that's in the Brotherhood? Just, just the three of them now, or they just like decided. I think there's there's some other people, but I think it's maybe they. I don't know. They just yes, kind of left them again, out. that's all that matters. Okay. And that's all this show cares about at this point are the characters. With Did names. you bring the big woman? Yes. Poor <laughs> Tormund is so <laughs> into great one. So into Brienne. Yes. Um, he's not happy that that's you know Tormund is not happy that this is the plan. He does not like this, and uh, he wishes Brienne was there. He wants to go snuggle in a cave. Which, I mean, good on on him. He's got his priorities. Yeah. um, The Hound wants a fight, though. I think this whole plan is stupid. Oh, people are going to die next episode. A lot of people. A lot of people. Then they go Uh, out there with, what, 15, maybe? Maybe, and, yeah, they're going to get murdered horribly. John's going to live. The Hound's going to live. That might be it. I mean, it's close. Um, Yeah, so speaking of, let's talk about... Death, Death Watch. Littlefinger. You think next episode Littlefinger? Yep. I think Littlefinger's going down. I mean, I mean, I think Beric's going down next episode. Yeah. I think Thoros is going down. I could see Tormund. I think John and the Hound might be the only one. Okay, there. let's talk about. So we've got Gendry, John, Hound, Tormund. Oh yeah, Gendry's there too. Um, Gendry's fine. Uh, Tormund and Beric. What? How would you rank those in least likely to die to most likely to die? Uh, Thoros number one, Beric number two, probably Tormund number three, and the other three aren't gonna die. I agree. Um, I don't, I wasn't thinking Tormund was gonna die just because I feel like he's the only representative of um, the wildlings, and so if we lose him, we kind of don't have a person to represent them as far as the story goes. Um, but it's seeming less important. I think their pl- the wildlings' plot is kind of running its course. So I yeah, Tormund might die. I I could see him. My guess is though ultimately he's gonna die. He's gonna sacrifice himself, which he might do this week. But I think Tormund's gonna be a, a sacrificial death. Yeah, he might save John or something like that. Or Brienne. But okay, now talking about preview. Mm-hmm. while we're talking about this, because that's the biggest thing that's going to happen next episode is this yes. whole thing. So, a few things. We see Gendry, you know, fighting with his hammer, but then we see the Hound has his hammer and is fighting. Mm-hmm. So, what does that mean about Gendry? True. 
we see them running away and it looks like somebody's being carried. So does Gendry get hurt and the hound is carrying him? And that doesn't look that good for him. Yeah. Um, we also see fire mm -hmm. in the background. So I'm wondering if maybe Daenerys does decide to fly down there. Possibly. And kind of helps out. Because where did all this fire come from in this, like, ice it's people? It's the Lord of Light. Yeah. Because I mean, we do see Beric light up his sword in the, the mm -hmm. preview, too, which is the from the trailer where he... Yeah, a little lightsaber. Yeah. Um, so those are my questions about it. Why does the Hound have Gendry's hammer? Mm -hmm. Who is being carried that looks injured? Um, why is there fire? Does Danny come? Oh, and we see basically what it looks like John by himself on a horse running away. So, big question, whose horse is that? Does Benjen show up? Oh, maybe. After all, John does want to find his uncle Benjen. And we're getting all these reunions, and <laughs> that's the only horse we've seen that's actually alive north of the wall, because they didn't walk out with any horses. True. Which True. is also kind of stupid. They're kind of, they're doing this real, yeah. real dumb like Dummies. <laughs> <laughs> Real, 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 you're real dumb, man. Real dumb, man. You kids are real dumb, man. So, yeah, yeah, then we also have a little bit of Arya Sansa. No one cares. We have the Night King. Looking. This, uh, this, yeah. this episode, it's going to be long. It's going to be this battle. Yes. It seems like episode five, Eastwatch, the one we just talked about, seems like very much a classic Game of Thrones setup episode where they put all the pieces in place right. and now we're going to have we're going to have our episode 9 yes even though it's only 6 episode 6 god I hate this episode or this season so I think we're going to get a, a huge 6 and 7 episode just like yes. we did last year with the 9 and 10 yes um so <sighs> stressed out about it <laughs> there's like I was seven. wondering what you were going to say there's like so. hordes of zombies. We see all of the whites. Mm -hmm. Like we see the king not on a horse. Yeah. And we see his like regular three guys. But then in the background looks like other guys on horses. And we we haven't seen the like zombie guys on horses. We've seen zombie horses, but they're not riding. They're too dumb for that. Yes. So we have to assume that there's a lot of whites back there. Yeah. They've so, got a giant army. And, and there's... Fifteen, if that? Fewer. Fifteen, fifteen, if what? Fifteen what? <laughs> of our guys, the living guys. Oh, okay. And then I was trying to quote Davos. Yes. Quoting Stannis. This, this is terrible. I appreciate, I <laughs> yeah, appreciate your thanks. effort. Um, <laughs> well, I see Ben, he's creepy. <laughs> I was like, what's happening? <laughs> I hope you watch the episode, otherwise we're just <laughs> ruining everything. Um, so is that all we got? Yeah. It's been fun. <laughs> we should make more music, right? Bye! <laughs>